We are a group of friends bound by our appreciation for liberty and good podcasting. Free-minded thinkers from all walks of life, our values come together with one accord to discuss the common culture and news of the day, along with whatever random crap is going on in our lives. Welcome to the Union of the Unknowns. Hey, y'all. We are the Union of the Unknowns. And I'm going to upset some people. This is Toons <laughs> reporting from the 603 New Hampshire Free State. We have Keel Thor. Howdy. I believe it's her birthday. We have Ashley. <laughs> today? Hello. It's not today. It, it was a couple weeks ago. Not close enough. Happy birthday. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> My man T. Uh, hello. That's me, Terry from Canary. And our favorite Australian, we have Stella. Hey there, everyone. Hey, Stella. Hey. Currently have a baby strapped to my chest, so if she gets wild, <laughs> I'll have to mute myself. But this week, I'd like to address what I see as uh, the war on masculinity. <clears throat> so let me uh, put a disclaimer before I set the table here. I am born out of a woman. I am here because of a woman. I have a beautiful wife that created a life that is also a woman. So I am certainly not woman bashing. That said, as a whole, uh, I'm pretty unimpressed with the state of men that I, look, that I see just in my day to day. Um, for context, I'm a construction worker. I'm 30 years old. I'm a, <clears throat> born in 92. Um, so I guess I'm a, a millennial. Um, and my peers are uh, just not impressive. Nobody seems to be a serious person. Um, the younger guys that we get are very uninterested at showing up on time. Uh, actually doing anything other than screwing around. Um, and I was kind of that person, you know, I, I had a strong worth work ethic my whole life, but I was kind of, uh, just, um, floating around until my wife came, which was a, for sure a blessing, but I kind of see, uh, culture as a whole. Um, encouraging young men to go to the clubs, to go to the concerts, to swipe on Tinder, to uh, not take life seriously. And I think that's a huge issue. Um, and I just kind of want to talk about how to drill down on, you know, is this actively planned on? Is this... Uh, actually a active war or is this uh just kind of the culture that we live in and it's pretty much organic um i guess i i'd, I'd also love to get a female perspective on this um uh, if you are as unimpressed as i am i guess i'll leave it um, at that and toss it out yeah stella do you want to go first with that stella Okay, well, I'll, I will go ahead and, and just chime in. Um, I agree with you that, that this is happening. I do believe that it is a war on men. Um, and like we have talked about in our chats, I actually believe that in that it, you know, we talk about this a lot, these multi-pronged approaches, but I think that it's a war on men and masculinity, but it's also a war on women. And it's also a war on the traditional family. And I 100% believe that it is on purpose. Um, and I think that there are some even connections with counterculture back in the sixties being infiltrated or and or created by the deep state you know the CIA folks and I think that it's been downhill ever since and I definitely think that it is intentional yes yeah. I agree it's intentional um, I, I don't know I think there's there's two different tunes was talking about 
And uh, I think there might be two different things going on. There's a general infantilization of people going on where people want to be children all the time and and kind of narcissistic and just satisfying their own needs and not thinking about, you know, a bigger picture, things with families and that. But there definitely is a, 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 a war on kind of traditional masculinity and, as Ashley says, and traditional femininity as well. Uh, and that is part of the plan to split off the family. It's definitely planned. I mean, you've only got to look back to someone like Gloria Steinem, the, one of the early feminists, who was a known CIA agent, and she's quite open about the fact that she said, well, you know, they were good guys at the CIA, and they were trying to do good stuff. They were just trying to help me. So mm -hmm. I'll work with them. Oh, how interesting, because I was watching a little bit of Gloria Steinem uh, last night, just trying to get a little bit of uh, background again, refresh. The memories that you try to forget um and uh Germaine Greer as well I didn't actually mind her that much um but I had no no idea that Gloria was CIA so there you go that's <laughs> what more can I say um I think there's also a spiritual aspect uh if people choose to take that into account um of war it's just the old division you know same old that's pretty much all I've got to say at this point. But, oh, yeah, the Jermaine Greer thing was very interesting, but we can talk about her later. We mm. used to get a lot of Jermaine Greer in the UK as well. And you're right, she can be quite entertaining. She's quite intelligent and witty. But, um, you know, got well, I was because... wondering whether she, she had some of those roots, Terry. Any idea about yeah, her very, there? Yeah, very likely. Very likely. No, I don't know much about her. Mm. Neither do I. Well, I've not studied these uh these people clearly uh, as much as you guys have uh, but i have noticed uh very you know in in recent years that yeah it's the and let me stop i i have observed that for many decades the erosion of the traditional family unit has been occurring and i it seems like it could be intentional uh maybe my theory is that i think the uh the the institution whatever that means benefits more when we don't have these tight units uh these decentralized places of self-control and uh self-reliance and stuff like that and I, I think it goes beyond simple traditional roles for men and women i think it spans demographics and you know there's a lot to be said about welfare and that sort of thing so mm -hmm. i think you know one th way you could look at it is the government grows as the the people become i mean the government is power and so as the people lose power over their own lives the government absorbs all that and people become more dependent upon the system the institution and the the way to I there's a lot there I guess I don't know I, I don't have a a focused uh, thing to add here but I think that's the way I think about it more um, yeah I think I think the masculinity <clears throat> thing is kind of a pop culture the way things are going nowadays um, certainly you can uh, you can look at that kind of John Wayne strong you know masculine um character is shunned by the the mainstream so you know you can't you can't do that anymore so but i i get it i i think you're you're all right i don't i don't know what the uh the goal is unless it's just to you know more power at the top kind of thing yeah it's division I was just going to say, I think he was right. I think it's, you know, it's partly the way to make people more dependent on the state. If you split apart the family and you, you know, you can't rely on your family unit, then people are going to look to the state more. I think that is part of the plan. Yeah, totally. It's the same old thing of, well, it's everything is always multifaceted, isn't it? It's nothing mm -hmm. is ever orchestrated for one purpose. So as you say, it's for, um, you know, I mean, I've mentioned the division. We all know that that's how they work. As you've just mentioned, the um, dependence on the state 
Keel raised some excellent points as well, and it's like same old thing to divide and conquer. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is that you know we have a as Stella just said multifaceted. So I think the other thing is that there are um, you know we know about the they're turning the frogs gay. We know about the endocrine disruptors. We know about soy being added to the food. Just things like that that I also exactly. believe are intentional to raise the estrogen level of males and i do believe that not only is it part of the other stuff of like the destruction of the traditional family increase reliance on the state um and disrupt these traditional roles to to actually contribute to mental illness because i feel like if you look at um some of the people like not that i'm simping for jordan peterson here but basically like that people are lacking meaning in their life I feel like these people are not well because what they the messaging that they are receiving in today's day and time is not well with the soul and so it's done in such a huge way you know with like Hollywood and gaming and you know friends and school and all this stuff and and so I think that people feel like it's normal, but they feel unwell and they don't know why. And I think that that's a big part of it too, is because you know there's a lot of pressure on women these days to be working, um, contributing to the family. And as Monica said, that that is a lot of that. At least one prong is to be able to tax another income, right? So I think that all of these things that people are told that you're supposed to do in today's time that have strayed very far from a traditional family is contributing to mental illness. And then the other aspect of that, I think that guys are, um, you know, becoming kind of like this prototype soy boy because they are trying to take out the one person who would be their, their most competition, right? The most likely to stand up. You know, the, if you think about the people that are most likely to, to, ha- to create a militia or to say, we have had enough of this, that, and the other thing, that is who they have gone after. Yeah. I have, I, I had intended to bring this up later, but I have a theory on the whole uh, endocrine, they're turning the frogs gay, and I wanted to float it out here. Um, I, I for a long time, I, I thought it was the diet. I thought it was the vaccines. I thought it was, you know, everything physical. But I think there's an aspect of um, the placebo effect is real. And if the culture is telling you that you should be, you know, you shouldn't be masculine, you, you shouldn't be strong, you shouldn't be assertive, you shouldn't be self-sufficient, you shouldn't protect and provide I think that kind of filters down I mean how how much do you think the the mental state of somebody affects their hormones and affects their yeah. their testosterone I think that's that may be a something that I've never heard and, and it may be a huge factor in, in the whole uh, soy boy phenomenon right like a self um like a feedback loop almost right because if if you yeah. feel like you're and if you're mentally weak, then you're going to be physically weak. Mm-hmm. If you're told that you're, you should apologize for being man, a male, you, sh- you should apologize for, you, you can't speak on X, Y, and Z, you know, you, you can't be assertive, then you're kind of mentally removing that aspect of masculinity. So that has it's to have whole, an effect. Yeah. It's a holistic thing, isn't it? I mean, More if one, spiritual if one part is, yeah, but if one part is sick, the rest isn't functioning well. Right. Terry, Terry might be able to answer this question with his more scientific background. Um, well, I think it's true that emotions give off chemicals, don't they? I mean, there's a body chemistry going on with emotion. Is that, is that right? So anger gives off certain things and joy gives off certain, you know, in, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm not even yeah, going to try to name them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, pheromones, you might be talking about, but, but um, you know, very big, with certain animals probably big in, with humans as well. There's sort of chemical messengers that they send to each other. So, yeah, people would definitely pick up on um, sort of emotions, uh, you know, if they're in the same room with somebody. But there's the well-known phenomenon that women synchronise their, their um, menstruation, isn't it, if they work together. 
Is that, that's that's yeah. all done by that real? chemical signals like that. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, that's definitely mm. real. Has been researched in that. Has Probably anybody some of our lady friends that? here will have experienced yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I always heard about that too, but I I just thought it was kind of an old wives' tale. And, and nice, yeah, girls too. Apparently, girls yeah. I've talked to said that was just you know bullshit. So I, I don't know. It's it's legit. Okay. So. Okay. Probably varies, I suppose. It would depend again on each person and how they relate to each other. And I yeah, suppose maybe it depends whether you're in sync with the person, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you mentioned well. you mentioned pheromones, Terry. So that's more of a sort of a giving off external thing. I was thinking more along the lines of like emotions. Uh, do they give off chemicals internally in the body? Like, you know, uh, you've got your not adre adrenaline. I was going to say adrenaline. Like a, yeah, serotonin. Um, yeah, well, you, you, the hormones. Yeah, um, so your emotions will affect your, your production of hormones. So you know, yeah, adrenaline's the, the best known one. So you know, when you get you experience fear, or you know, when you want to run away, that's what that's what you get coursing yeah. through your body, yeah. which has some effects on your mind as well. So um, exactly right. So that's exactly what Tunes was saying. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just as a some, just as an idiot construction worker take too. Like if I wake up dreading going to work, then I'm not going to have a good day. If I wake up excited, ready to go, Hey, it's Friday. We got an easy day. Yeah. We're going to get it done. The day goes a lot smoother. I'm sure that's, that's everybody's take. If you wake yeah, up yeah. all piss poor and you know, you're going to keep that mindset. Yep. Stella and I, I, I think were it's just all talking about together, that. Really. <laughs> I think yeah, it's really. all linked together. I think what Ashley says is very important as well. You know, the, we, we live in this toxic world and the, the chemicals do affect us, but they affect different people in different ways. And maybe that depends on your mental state. You know, some people are maybe more resilient than others because they're positive people because, you know, the, the spiritual aspect of things is, is a real thing to me as well. You know, the, the, yeah. the, how you're, how you're, your spirit, if you're spiritually well, that will sometimes keep your body well. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm state of mind yeah definitely I'm, I'm i definitely believe that i've noticed it in myself as i've changed my mental attitude about health particularly that's kept me healthier for sure if you're scared uh, uh, of the air you, you're gonna get sick mm -hmm. yeah. i guess more yep. or less <clears throat> there's a new zealand doctor i like called sam bailey a, a woman who's been very yeah. good on the covid stuff and she's sort of recently come around to um she's a no virus person she doesn't believe in viruses and yeah. interestingly she said that uh since she stopped believing in viruses she hasn't been sick at all <laughs> yeah so, i agree i mean think about <laughs> yeah, get rid of fear that's the biggest thing that's the mm, biggest yeah. eater which is of course is one of the things they want us to experience because that's what they're trying to keep us in fear it. that's what it is all about fear is the mind killer yeah see everything killer yeah see i kind of trace that into towards towards you know if you're living on your mom's in your mom's basement and you're the world is telling you you're you know you should be upset about your masculine masculinity you're, you're obviously not going to be john wayne like you said kill mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i think i think every generation gets easier to live i think there's there's fewer well i'd say fewer wars but we have wars all the time so but we are you know losing uh our brothers and sisters and neighbors like past uh, generations have and we have way more conveniences these days uh, in this country at least and i think that you aren't you know what is it steel sharpen steel right so i think you've got you've got a softer generation each time and then the previous generation says oh those kids they don't know what work is and you know i guess they don't um but uh that could that could be part of it too my generation in particular because um i think my generation was the the start of the helicopter parent and uh when I was coming through high school, everybody went to college, you know, and we all know what college is. College has 
the safe spaces now in the cuddle rooms and right so so what do you what do you expect from a young man that's 22 23 years old and he's still treated like he's a toddler how, how do you expect him to face the world yeah. exactly yeah. i often think back to i don't know world war one and think about you know 18 year olds flying planes that were shooting at things you know it's just there's no comparison is there it, only last night when i was looking at some of the shemaine greer stuff uh, there was a bunch of school kids being interviewed and I would guess they were probably around about year eight or nine, which would place them around about 14, 15, something like that. And these kids were back in the early 70s and the interviewer was asking questions. Now, they'd read Germaine Greer's book, The Female Eunuch, at that age. And the way they were talking about it, they were just like adults in children's clothing. It was astounding. And then I was thinking back to how an interview would go today with the kids. <laughs> it's like we're all just kids in adults clothing now. It's yeah. It's ridiculous. There's no I've comparison. Heard that point made before. Yeah, it's very telling, yeah. I, That's by know, design, hundred percent. Something I've I've always noticed is that if you watch movies from the fifties and forties and thirties and you see the the faces of these people that are actors they all look like they're 60 years old and they're in their 30s you know or younger <laughs> yes and i i think that the the kind of i i don't i don't know what it is it's it's they are way more mature and i made this comment maybe on the last show we did but i i never felt like i i'm as much of an adult as say my dad is right now or my dad is was you know, when he was younger than I am now, it's like, there's, there's something about previous generations that's always more aged and mature. Yeah. And it, it, that can't be, that can't be the way it's always been, you know, there, there must be at some point that must've st started happening. I think I what they've done is they've, I'm sorry. No, I, I was watching, uh, we watched uh, the Frankenstein from, you know, with, uh, not Lon Chaney. What's, who was the name of the, the guy that played Frankenstein? In that Bella Lugosi? No, no. Lugosi? Dracula. Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff, Frankenstein. We watched that uh, on Friday night, uh, me and my wife and my daughter. And I'm looking at these guys and I'm, th I'm thinking about this in my head. And, and these, these guys look so old and they're wearing suits and they're walking around and and i'm like i bet that guy who looks like he's 50 years old is probably 23 and he's marrying the girl in the movie and um, i'm like what how does this happen how does it mm. can i steer that... back towards uh why i put that disclaimer up top uh, i think where we went wrong was uh feminism and um geez how do i say this nicely uh <laughs> fred carefully <laughs> men men lead when men give up that role women lead poorly uh, i think that's the the most concise way to say it yeah it's not really the natural roles so is it? right so oh, you go, Ashley. oh, okay. You go, Ashley. I, yeah, I was going to say, I and I had wondered about this, you know, it's, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yep. yeah, this is something that I've been think. Okay. So something that I've been thinking about is that exact thing, right? Um, and, and I do, I think that I do have to agree with that to an extent. And something that I saw not long ago said that a lot of times, um, women tend to, now not every, 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 whatever, but they tend to be more agreeable and having a more difficult time to make like the hard call. Um, and maybe that's part of it, you know, but I, I do, I do have to agree with that. I think that there are different instances where, um, you know, that women are naturally good at and things that men are naturally good at. 
Yeah. And so exactly. whenever you're starting to create uh, a society to disrupt that, then I think you begin having a lot of problems. Oh, and before I forget, one thing that I wanted to bring up, this is something that Cyprian talks about a lot, is it's almost like uh, we, per our spiritual aspect of this, that we are sort of, the sun has kind of set on that masculine and now it's rising on the devouring mother. And I feel like that is an archetype that mm. you can and do see over and over and yes. over. And it's really perfect for, for many things that we see today, but especially this over, um, this overzealous nanny state and the people's desire to want to be mothered from the nanny state, right? So it's it's a crazy archetype that can be applied on mm. so many different layers and levels of what we're dealing with here. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting. Expand on that a little bit. What's the devouring mother archetype? I don't know that. So um, I hopefully am not going to do an injustice here, but basically just the over like the smothering right the carrying you to death right at the peril of what the country at the peril of people's mental health at the peril of you know your the wellness of your soul mm -hmm. um and yeah. certainly at the peril of freedom so i'm going to step into it phenomenon. go ahead so. sorry terry the the cowering cowering uh, i was just going to say it, it sounds a bit like the karen phenomenon because uh yes. you could say that that comes from a, an over overly zealous concern with you know my you know i want to keep my family safe so i'm going to shout at you for not wearing a mask yeah yes i think um also what tune said earlier about the helicopter parenting that's pretty much what what Ashley's talking about, the devouring mother archetype. Yes. I'm going to step into some dangerous territory here. Um, and I will put a little <laughs> disclaimer here. I do not condone violence in any way, shape or form, but I'm going to bring it back to the biblical standards of very beginning of this sort of decaying of the natural order, which was spare the rod, spoil the child. Now, I'm not in any way saying that people should be <laughs> hitting their children, you know, unnecessarily or or even you, you know you, i think you all know what i'm saying here mm -hmm. but what what that what that is spare the rod spoil the child is basically saying you know you let them all get away with stuff then there's going to be chaos basically right you um, have to have discipline Definitely. yes and that is what has been stolen it's like um actually what you were talking about before I, I think yes they have purposely come in and and they've they've they big t they the trademark have mm -hmm. upset the natural order of things because one of the things yes. that I was um I noticed on the, another Jermaine Greer thing last night was an interview and they were just interviewing ladies on the street in 1973 I think it was and the general thing was because back then there wasn't social media and so t when somebody released a book it was quite difficult to promote it you know it was a lot of it was word of mouth um so they were just uh, the, the interviewer was asking ladies on the street, "Have you read the female eunuchs, the Jermaine Greer book?" and and asking about, you know, do they agree about feminism? And most of the ladies were just, "Oh no, I'm pretty happy with the way things are. They're quite happy playing their mother wife roles at home. They didn't really need to change until somebody told them that they should." So that's right. kind of where it all started coming in there with the feminism thing and. And like Keel said earlier, each generation's gotten easier. I know what, I know what he meant, but I, I don't know about easier because that's very relative. Some things have definitely become a little more convenient. Uh, we've got washing machines, et cetera, you know, dishwashers. But I don't know about easier because I look at the state of, I mean, this whole conversation is based on, I look at the state of men and mental health and children and it's not looking real good. So yeah, I don't know if it's easier. Not well. <laughs> you're right natural order and i think that go yeah i love that and i think it goes back to um you know people are not well just like you said the disrupting the natural order intentionally which tie back to tunes that you know a lot of times men are natural leaders now not that there are not 
instances and you know times and cultures where the the matriarch has been um you know the leader or you find a balance of the matriarch and the patriarch and maybe if you're looking at and, and I'm not like super well educated on this but a native american culture right but maybe the matriarch is stronger in this aspect of it which is like the healing which is the this aspect and then you have the patriarch that is the leader in the other aspect in the safety of the tribe or, or whatever you know yes the yeah, cycles. i don't see i don't see why we can't just celebrate the fact that we're different and we bring different strengths to different things i mean that's that's a great thing exactly you know, yeah, right. don't know yeah like saying. I, I, it would be awful, you know, speaking personally, if, if all women were like men, uh, my life would be totally unenriched because, you know, I love the fact that women are, are different than men and bring a different sort of energy and, and, and skills of different, you know, the way they are with relationships. My, my wife is so much better at, at forming relationships with people than I am. And, you know, that's part, partly one of the things that women, I think, are good at. And to touch on that too, like ladies have a superpower. They literally make life. Uh, there, that is unbelievably. Like that is like why we are all here. Everybody came out of a woman, and that is incredible. Yeah. The idea that that yeah that, that should be that should be it's it's offensive to me that that should be downplayed for the the girl boss meme. It, that's, you're hundred, that's so yes. offensive to me, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and the NHS in the UK is now talking about you know you have to refer to pregnant people and not pregnant women, you know, because they're they're mm. trying to claim that that not only it's not only women who can give birth to to babies. I mean, it just this is the NHS crazy God. town. Yeah, <laughs> it's offensive yeah. though. That that's offensive to 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 humanity. Like the reason we're <laughs> we're all here is because we came out of a woman. Like they have a superpower. I I'm expendable because i, th I don't know whether those people came out of a woman i think they might have broken out of an <laughs> yeah. egg laid by yeah. a reptile yes right for lizards sure. lay eggs. Well, <laughs> the predator class for sure stella <laughs> yeah i was sure. so i was watching that video i think uh terry put up in our discord uh a while ago the red pill was it called yeah. and yeah, it was this, this lady was doing a documentary about um male rights and that movement and her her personal journey through thinking about that whole concept and stuff like that i didn't get through the whole thing but it seemed like she was turning her opinion at some point yeah uh, she but, was a feminist yeah and uh but i i think the 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 problem i, th I think one of the the key hinges and maybe this is resolved by the end of the movie i don't know but it seemed like, and I wrote this down, uh, chivalry need not be trivialized, right? Why? It seemed like chivalry was a big part of what's going on here, you know, opening doors for ladies, being, you know, letting the women and children off the boat first as it goes down, all of these kind of honorable kind of efforts and concepts and things. We don't need to throw all that stuff away because it's based upon man, woman, you know, stereotypes. Why, why not just, if, if that's what you want to do, then just do it. And if you're not going to do that, fine, you know, but I don't know why it has to be one way or the other, you know, women are oppressed by men or men are being, you know, white men are being reversed, reverse uh, racism or something like that why do we have to grasp onto these really tight and say, this is the way it's got to be. We have to get rid of this. We have to throw this yeah, one out, yeah. you know, like, label you know, everything. Like Terry yeah. said, why, why can't we be different and just, you know, embrace that, you know, let's exactly, we don't, we don't have to like people that are different, but we, we should, you know, accept their differences and say, okay, well, this contributes to, the culture that we live in this is part of human the human existence you know but, so but to, big, to, big t they is trying to deny even the physical differences between men and women now so they they want you know men to be able to compete 
with in women's sports, for example. And you know, for things like uh, the UFC, it's incredibly dangerous for a woman to, yeah. to fight a man who's identifying as a woman. And you know, there they, have been a lot of bad injuries resulting from it. And you know, it's just ridiculous. It's it's just we were talking before the show about it's it's really a denial of reality. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, it's hard to know where to start with that. It's yeah, just so I, crazy. I think part of our purpose of being here is to, like Peel was saying, we don't have to like everybody, but I think the purpose is to accept um, regardless and also learn that that person might have something very valuable about them. Um that it's going to be essential somewhere along the line and fit like a puzzle piece, like we all should and stop fighting and bending our corners. <laughs> um, but there's a saying that something that Kiel was saying before about chivalry, it just came to mind. My, my ex was a very intelligent man. Uh, he used to always say chivalry isn't dead. It just smells funny. <laughs> it's really true. It's true. <laughs> That's good. There's a title. <laughs> I like I like being chivalrous, you know. I think there's a that yeah. shows a lot of character in a person. Well, it, it, it touches yeah. on on your ancestral reason to be here. Like I don't, yeah. I I feel like I'm I'm getting all spiritual, but like that's why we're here because the men protected and the woman made us. Like that's why we're here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there was much feminism going on through ancient history. I don't really recall any historical moments that were about empowering women uh where did that Correct. all come from all of a sudden why why do we suddenly need that we need to just find our balances and harmony i would exactly. love to can I, yeah. push back can i share I a story to... about sorry go to go to go to go to go to i'll, I'll finish well i uh, just want to share a story about feminism i don't think you guys might have heard this there was um uh i think it was a journalist who got to know one of the rockefellers very well david i think this was quite a few years ago uh, and um, he got him to know, know him well enough so that the, David Rockefeller was very open about, you know, talking about things. Uh, and they, they got onto the subject of feminism, and, and the, the Rockefeller says, um, what do you think the idea of feminism was? And then this guy, being a bit of a woke lefty type at the time, was saying, well, I think it's great, you know, it's all about, you know, women's rights and trying to get gain equality and... Uh, and David Rockefeller just laughed and said, no, that's not the idea at all. The idea was to get them into the system, paying tax, so and get them into the work so that they weren't, um, you know, looking after the family and, and basically make them part of the system. So uh, I've heard this a few times, and I think it's probably true. Mm. Yeah, it produces cracks in the family unit, doesn't it? It's twofold, yeah, right. You have, another you, have... Tax, you have another tax cow, plus you have the state raising yeah. your child. So you're in That's what I was going to say. You have the right. Yep, cradle to grave under the state. Yep. 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 So, so I would love to push back on the the idea of live and let live. Um, I'm all about everybody is unique and everybody is important and all that. But what happens when the the people that are holding it all together die off and we have a bunch of soy boys and girl bosses trying to you know run the sewer system trying to trying to run the grid trying to is, is, provide us food i mean we're, we're screwed i'm all about living let live until the lights go out i don't know i, that I might, prefer that might be the sorry man here you go i prefer sir paul's wording you know live and let die <laughs> that might be the point uh because the swing the pendulum always swings back doesn't it and everything is cyclic so that may be the point turns where the soy boys are so sick of being soy boys it's going to become quite trendy to be masculine and trendy to mm-hmm. be feminine and being led so it'll all spin back again it's just how that's far that's is it going to go yeah mm. how much pain do we have in the meantime exactly Oh, we got <laughs> maybe we've got to give the pendulum a push, you know. <laughs> this is the Pete Quinones line, isn't it? I mean, he's he's sort of given up on the non-aggression principle. You know, he's a sort of famous, was a famous libertarian, I should say. I'm not sure he's really a libertarian <laughs> anymore. 
but he he, he says you know what's the point of being non the non aggression principle when these people are trying to kill me or jab me or lock me into exactly. a camp or you know I mean mm. and and I honestly I think that it's a good point that's something that I'm still mulling over myself um but I that's exactly what I thought of when Tune said that and it is like yeah you the people how does Pete say it? But something about like the people who just want to be left alone are going to lose out to every, every time to the people yeah. who are trying to kill you or the people that are actively moving against you, the people that are just wanting to be left alone, you know, you're not making any progress against that. And I, you know, I still don't really know where I land on all of this because part of me does feel like we're in a spiritual I mean, not part of me, a hundred percent of me believes that we're in a spiritual war, but it's almost to me feels like this has to happen. It, it is, it seems unstoppable to me now, potentially that's pessimistic and defeatist. And I do not mean to do that. And I'm not trying to bring down the vibration, but because I feel like I know what, what is said in the Bible and I know how it ultimately ends, but I also know that that does not mean that it's not going to be quite difficult. Um, and part of me feels like, you know, the, the people like us who are not falling for the narrative and we don't subscribe to what they're trying to cram down our throat, that we are here for a reason. Um, and it's not easy. And I think it was maybe Jason Burmes or something that said, Hey, this is a test. Life is a test. It's, it's not easy. Um, I don't, sorry. I think I rambled. Sorry about that. That sounded good. To oh, me. We, were, we were listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I still think the non-aggression principle is, uh, is a good thing. Um, but that because you're you're not being aggressive towards others doesn't mean you should keep your guard down. You know, you, you still need to defend yourself. And if people are acting aggressively toward you, however you define that, uh, you you should react to that. Uh, that becomes and, self-defense, doesn't it? Right. It's not aggression. It's not aggression mm -hmm. at that point. Yep. I think so self-preservation. I think you the and I feel like... Sorry, carry on, Tudes. I think Keel and I would live great uh, living under the non-aggression principle. I think you and I would get along phenomenal. Um, I'm just very skeptical of the uh, lizard people, trans, fentanyl brigade. Well, I, I don't think, think they play by our rules. No, I don't think they do either. And I think that's why we need to keep our eye on them. If mm -hmm. that's even possible, you know, they live on a completely higher plane of existence that we'll never see, but. Oh, it's um, much lower. <laughs> they just think it's higher. Well, maybe in the clown world, you know, they're, it looks like, you know, yeah. whatever. It's upside uh, down. Yes, yeah, upside down. But, uh, you know, yeah, you gotta, it's, it's not about being passive in my mind, the non-aggression principle. It's about, you don't, you're not going to steal from your neighbor, you know. You're going to trade. No, I, I think the point Pete Kinnan, one of the points Pete Kinnan is makes, he says, well, you, it's fine. You can have your libertarian community and you can homeschool your kids and everything, but you've got to bear in mind that 90% of the kids, your kids are going to come across, have been schooled in this leftist crazy world and they're going to want to, you know, take away their property, for example, or put them in a camp, I don't know, you know, for wrong yeah. think. So it's a difficult one. Yeah, if you're going to homeschool your kids, you're going to have to give them lessons that are outside of the strict homeschool curriculum that you're going to download or whatever it is you do, you know. Yeah, you got to, you get, you probably ought to teach them, you know. These other kids are going to be in these public schools. They're going to be looking at life differently and, and maybe show them the kinds of lessons that they, other kids are going to get. I don't know. I don't, I don't oh, homeschool this... <laughs> my kid because I, I can't handle that, but. Um, I, I put my kid in a, I feel it's a good public school. They're not teaching her bad things yet, but she's only in second grade. So who knows what'll happen, but, uh, I'm definitely yeah. talking to her about these kind of wild concepts. Oh, daddy's crazy, but 
you know she's not been exposed to tranny story hour yet, no, no she hasn't and i i have no <laughs> reason to believe, to believe my, my school would, would do stuff like that but right um, yeah i try to i try to tell her don't let them brainwash you and you know ace the test do what the teacher tells you but you know keep an open mind and try to think about things on your own it's to try to lessons that ones. i try to teach her and of course yeah you know she's seven so she's like ah whatever dad but I, <laughs> I i i hope you know kinds of things i'm telling her are going to sit there and at some point that egg will hatch and just say oh this is, must be what dad was talking about all those years ago you know yeah i think the most important thing that you can teach her is how to think for herself like you just said um it, it is a mindset we are indoctrinated to be dependent you know turn up to school on time put your hand up if you need to go to the toilet eat when we tell you um where's the bit where it's like no i'm not hungry at the moment i'll eat in an hour you know um where's the bit where we don't look at the teacher for an answer where's the bit where they start thinking about suggesting things rather than just taking it in you know so i think that's yeah. the most important thing because that's what's being pillaged and raped at the moment isn't it is our minds and our individuality and our creativity and our self-sufficiency so that's what we've got to strengthen mm. yep so you made an interesting point on the discord chat before we came on here that i want to come back to you i think you said something like is it is it you said it was mostly men's fault for letting it happen uh rather than women's fault for imposing you know feminist ideology on the world so i would squarely put this on the shoulders of men because men are are still children i mean i i i've very rarely come come across a man that's my age or, or older that uh like we were talking about before the the old school the stereotypical archetypal archetypical uh you know man the actors in the 50s they were 20 and and they were men um it's 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 just uh because men have given up the role of being a man and pro protecting and providing and leading um we've we've dropped the ball um I, I just I don't see how it how it's not a, a man problem uh, to be passive in and, and to, to 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 not want to make something of yourself and and I I'm not sure how to uh, how to go about this um, yeah, I'm sure the men here would agree that you're not a complete person without uh, a, a strong partner. And uh, yeah. yeah, I think um, when you said that, that you've dropped the ball, I think the ball was stolen. It was being taken. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. Regardless, regardless, steal it back, be a man. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess I'll have to write down my thoughts on this one, but I, I do, I yeah. do blame them for for allowing the devouring mother to uh, devour. Yeah, you know, I think it, it it's it's a two sided thing. It would that wouldn't have happened without the pushing from the, the side of the feminists and and you know uh, I think the state was behind a lot of that pushing as well. So you know, and that's be, it's become part of the culture, isn't it, to sort of push feminism now rather than toxic masculinity. Even even big companies are putting out adverts that are complaining about toxic masculinity, like Gillette. They're right, but a, 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 a confident man hears somebody call him a toxic toxic masculine and says, oh, okay, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yep, you're right. You know, like a confident man doesn't have baby mamas. That's, that's one of the phenomenons that are, drives me nuts. The, a confident man doesn't have child support. A confident man has a family and, and takes care of his wife. I mean, it's just, uh, it's 100% it's on, on men. I'll have to collect my thoughts on that point and bring it back at a different, different episode. No, it's hard to know. know. It's, it's you uh, you're, you're, you want to be strong and it's, you don't want to run away from your problems. You want to tackle them and take care of your shit, you know? Yeah. Maybe that's where, where I'm getting at is uh, there's a lot of cowardice and, and just, 
yes, I'm toxic. Yes, I'm X, Y, and Z. Yes. Oh yeah, my my baby mama's crazy. Like, well, that's because you're not around, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I I also do think that there is a um, you know, there is responsibility. In, and I'm not saying that you're wrong, Tunes. I'm saying that women and men in this regard, I think are responsible, right? So like, instead of when I was growing up and my parents were not like, oh, you need to be a bad bitch. You need to be a girl boss. I mean, they weren't like that, right? But the understanding was like, you are going to go to college. Like you are going to have a career. My mom was working the whole time when I was growing up, right? So I think that people both of them bought into it right so the first thing that you do is trick people to let somebody else take care of their kids during the day um that's where it starts and then you like gradually crank it up crank it up crank it up until you've got the phenomenon of the girl boss like oh i don't need no man that whole kind of thing and people bought it but the thing is is that it was so although it was radical the start with to start with like the the feminist wave it that was radical however it was then so incremental after that you know that's a good point so whose fault is it it really (laughs) men or i blame i blame i blame men it's hard to pinpoint regardless regardless stand up or yeah, them, or, yeah, the, or them, maybe. Maybe it's them. It's their fault. I think it's them. It, this was deliberate. Yeah, they came well. in on yeah. a, the whole, like I said, you know, those women that were being interviewed, they didn't know there was a problem. And and then the pill, the contraceptive pill. Yes. That came in, you know, that was be- beautifully timed. I have no doubt that was coordinated. Mm-hmm. Um, and then along with that rock and roll music that came in and disrupted everything (laughs) so there was influences from all over um and women just you know they were told to embrace it and they did it was something new and fresh for humanity so of course it's going to be embraced it doesn't matter what it is if it's new and fresh it'll be embraced no matter how crazy it is as we can see um so yeah i just think there was so many factors um, influencing the mindset um, and the biblical side of things was being ripped away as well. Um, you know, that got slowly removed from schools. There was no more scripture classes. Yep. Um, and even actually, this was very upsetting to me when my children were very small um, and the local school, this was in Tasmania. So, you know, we were fairly behind things in general Um, and the local school brought in the rules that the teachers weren't allowed to hug the children or anything like that particularly the males my children had this wonderful male teacher he was just so invested he was a fabulous person great teacher the children loved him and we had a conversation in the playground how he was so sad because he sees the children falling over and scraping their knee and doing and normally he'd you know he'd go up and give them a hug and say all right we'll go and fix it up and whatever he wasn't allowed to do that anymore suddenly the relationship was changed from this male teacher how valuable is a male teacher and good ones <laughs> and they completely destroyed that so there's just one tiny facet yeah and one thing um i know we're coming to a close here but one thing that I wanted to add and I know this may sound really out there but since I do really believe that we are in that spiritual battle that I've talked about and I really do believe that there is something to these ancient families that we can connect to the chaos that's happening today I and you know we hear um a lot of times you've heard of so and so selling their soul to the devil. We've heard of these people doing, you know, satanic rituals and things like that and dark magic and and human sacrifice and all this stuff. So one of the things that I thought about is in regard of like whose fault is it? But you know, they call us hackable animals, right? So part of me believes that they that some of this knowledge that they have 
um, on how to manipulate human behavior may even be otherworldly. I know that sounds maybe out there, but if you look at, or if, if you're where I am, and I believe that we are in this spiritual war, the good versus evil, the prince of this world, all that stuff, then how do we know that somebody doesn't have knowledge on how to manipulate human beings, on how to destroy human beings, on how to make human beings sick, on how to make human beings um, unwell, mentally, physically, you know, all that stuff. So that's something that I, that I ponder um, a fair amount, I would say. I'm 100% with you on that. And that's a whole other discussion, isn't it? That's another it show. For another <laughs> another <laughs> episode. <yeah. laughs> I would love to pick up on that uh, at another time to talk about the future of masculinity and uh, where we're headed. Um, yeah. I, think, I think they've done a hell of a job uh, scaring the little ones of the air. I mean, how, how, how masculine is a is a kid coming up going to end up being and uh, we're in for some hard times. So the weak men have made the hard times and I don't think there's many strong men to uh, make it right. But on that note, uh, thanks for listening. I hope I didn't upset you too bad. Uh, reunion of the unknowns. Oh, I think we're all still week. friends. Yeah. Yeah. If, we're all if, still friends. If they do have hate mail, um, feel free to call our phone number and address it to Justin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't send it to send it to Justin. Right? Yeah, <laughs> he wants it. He's not He's here to defend himself. <laughs> I will say, I, I spent the whole episode with a little female strapped to my chest. Yes, and she did not cry once. Sweet yeah. angel. So I, I am not. I am not a woman hater. That is the opposite of toxic masculinity. If ever I saw 100%. it, one hundred percent. That is beautiful. <laughs> yes. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Union of the Unknowns. You can find new episodes every week on all your favorite podcasting networks. 